we're going to give people a few seconds to jump on with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mackenzie's going to help me tonight. This is a little different. There's nobody here. We are so glad that everyone has joined us tonight. We want you to know that we miss you. Um, but this is a great chance for you to be able to show your parents what you've learned in Christ Kids and what you've learned in your Bible classes. Okay? So you're going to show up for your parents? Thumbs up? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, just an announcement. Je uh, Jeremy has posted the audio of the kids' CD to the Facebook page for Central. We made the CD a couple years ago. I think there's 20, 25 songs on there. Um, just make sure when you hit the link to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you can access those songs. All right, guys. Are y'all ready to get started? Okay. Let's so, get let's get started. All right. First off, we have to put our thinking caps on. So, put your thinking caps on. Oh, those are tight because we haven't used them in a long time. Stretch them down. Hey, you might have to help your parents put their thinking caps on. Get it in the front. Get it in the back. Everybody have their thinking caps on? Did you help your parents get their thinking caps on? Yeah? All right. Now we got to turn our listening ears on. All right. So turn those dials to turn into the right station. Is yours turned into the right station? Yeah. Hey, hey, kids, I think you need to help your parents turn their listening ears to the right station. Can you help them? Are they tuned into the right station? All right. All right, so first of all, we're going to start with some of our Bible work that we've been working on in Christ Kids that so many of y'all know, and I'm so proud of you. So even though I can't physically hear you, I want you to be yelling at the screen all the answers uh, because I know you know them. All right, so let's start. How many parts are there to the Bible? How many parts to the Bible? How many parts do we have to the Bible? We have two. two. Two parts of the Bible. What are they, Mackenzie? The Old, Old Testament, Testament and, and the, the New Testament. So we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. All right, guys, you've got those thinking caps on. You've got your listening ears on. How many books are in the Old Testament? How many books are in the Old Testament? There's 39 in the old. And then there's how many in the new? 27 in the new. Let's sing that together. There's 39 in the old, 27 in the new. 39 in the old, 27 in the new. Then we put this together. How many books are in the whole Bible? There's 66, 66. 66 books in the Bible. Man, y'all are so smart. Y'all yep. haven't lost anything. Good job, guys. All right, we've got a couple more of our Bible songs that we're going to sing, and then we're going to read our story. All right, you ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Good job. What does that spell, guys? Bible. Awesome. All right. Now, I know for some of you, you really have your New Testament song down, and some of you are still working, so here it goes, and hopefully we'll catch on. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts and the letters to the Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First and Second and Third John, Jude and Revelations. Good job, guys. Man, y'all are so smart. All right, earlier tonight, I put stuff out on Facebook. And we ask some of your mommies what your favorite fruits are. So I need you to help me sing our Fruit of the Spirit song, okay? So we're going to go through. We have a couple of kids. I'm going to say their names while we're doing it because they're the ones that help me pick out these fruits. Are you ready? 
the fruit of his spirit's not a luckily cake. An orange, the fruit of his spirit's not an orange. If you want to be an orange, you might as well eat it because you can't be a fruit of the spirit because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the spirit's not a, what grace? A banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. If you want to be a banana, you might as well eat it because you can't be a fruit of the spirit because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the spirit's not a, a strawberry. Yeah. The fruit of the spirit's not a strawberry. If you want to be a strawberry, you might as well eat it because you can't be a fruit of the spirit because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the spirit's not a what, Jolene? Mangoes. The fruit of the spirit's not a mango. If you want to be a mango, you might as well eat it because you can't be a fruit of the spirit because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Gentleness and self-control. The fruit of the spirit's not a what, shepherd? An apple. The fruit of the spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, you might as well eat it because you can't be a fruit of the spirit because the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Good job, guys. All right. So, now I can't hear you, but your parents can. So, I want you to answer the questions, and I want you to um, tell them what you're thinking. So, here are some of the questions that we have before we read our story tonight. Have you ever had to make a choice? Have you ever had to make a choice? Yeah. Yeah, we make choices every day. Some are real easy and some not so much, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to make a hard choice between something that was right and something that was wrong? I know I did. You have? <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, right? Mm -hmm. To make the right decision, yes. So in our story tonight, we're going to learn about somebody that had to make a choice between right and wrong. Another question I have is, have you ever seen a lion? You ever seen a lion? Yeah. Where? At the zoo. At the zoo? Yeah. Have you ever seen a lion? <laughs> well, are lions big? Yeah. Yeah? Are they scary? Yep. Are they mean? Yeah. I guess if you mess with them, they probably are. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to be close enough to find out if the lion's mean or not. I don't either. Well, tonight in our Bible story, we have a couple of lions, and we also have, um, Daniel. we're also going to see if Daniel will make a right choice, because he's going to have a choice to decide. All right, here we go. So you have your listening ears on? All right. In the third year of King Joachim, Jerusalem was attacked and defeated by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The Babylonians carried off the cups and other vessels from the Holy Temple. They began using them in their own idol worship. The king then ordered the smartest and most handsome men of the Israel of Israel to be brought to his palace. There they would stay for three years and be trained to serve the king. One of these men was a Jewish boy named what? Daniel. <laughs> Each day Daniel was given a portion of the food and wine that he refused to eat. 
he chose instead to eat vegetables and to drink water. In doing so, he did not break the Jewish law. That's good. <laughs> Daniel was by far the smartest and most handsome of them all. He served for many years until Nebuchadnezzar died, and his grandson, Belshazzar, became king. The Lord gave Daniel the gift of interpreting dreams. On many occasions, Daniel was able to interpret the king's dreams, as he soon became well known as a very wise man of God. One night, Belshazzar gave a great party. A thousand guests were there. The king gave orders to bring out the gold and silver cups that they had stolen from the Jewish temple years ago. They began pouring wine into these holy cups while they praised their false gods. The Lord was angry. What, what kind of face do you think an angry face is? All right, kids, show your parents an angry face. Oh, angry. Suddenly, a mysterious hand appeared in the room and beginning, began writing strange words on the palace walls. I don't know about you, but I'd be kind of shocked. Let me see your shocked face. Kids, your shocked face? Yeah, I'd be shocked. I'd be scared. <laughs> I'd be scared too. The king collapsed with fear. He called out, if anyone can tell me what this means, speak now, and I will make you third in command of Babylon. The queen spoke. She said, there is a man who walks with God, the God of Israel in your kingdom. His name is Daniel. Call for him. He will tell you what these writings mean. So Daniel was brought before the king. Can you read this? Tell me, demanded the king. Yes, O king. It says that you have not honored the living God, but you've mocked him. Daniel was made third in command of Babylon. But that night, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, was killed and Darius the Mede took over the kingdom. King Darius had picked 120 princes to rule his kingdom. He then selected three presidents to oversee the princes. Of these three, Daniel became the most important. The other presidents and governors were jealous. Let me see your jealous face. Oh, I don't know, is that So jealous that Daniel had become honored in this way. So they plotted against him. They went to the king as a group and said, O oh, King Darius, all of us have agreed that you should make a new law this day. The new law would make it a crime for anyone to pray to any god or man but you. O oh, king, for the next 30 days, make this law. So do you, is it right to pray to anybody but God? It's not. It's not right. But they were trying to make a law. That's bad. It is bad. So you know what King Darius did? He agreed, and he put it in writing. Now, when Daniel heard about the new law, he went upstairs to his room. He got down on his knees, and he prayed just as he had prayed before. When the princess and the governor found Daniel praying, they ran to the king and said, Daniel has broken the new law, O king, he must be punished. Throw him to the lions. Darius did not want to hurt Daniel, but these evil men had tricked him. So Darius gave the order, put Daniel in the lion's den. They took Daniel to the lion's den and threw him in. At dawn, the king arose from his sleepless night and hurried to the den. Daniel, he cried, are you alive? Has your God rescued you from the lions? Daniel answered, my God has sent the angels who shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me, nor have I done you any wrong, O king. Pull him up, shouted the king. Then at the king's command, those men who had falsely accused Daniel were thrown into the lion's den. That's good that Daniel wasn't eaten. He wasn't eaten. God protected him. He sent angels. Yay. 
So tonight we learned that Daniel was brave when faced with a scary situation. So I have a question for y'all. Are there, are there things that you are scared of? Are there things that you are scared of? I'm scared of little things like snakes and spiders. Let me get that from your daddy. There's a lot of things that we can be scared of. You can tell your parents what you're scared of. But you know what? We, but even in the scariest situation, God is bigger than everything that I'm scared of. He is. God is bigger and he's always going to take care of me. And he always has, right? Yeah, he always has. He always has. Just like God took care of Daniel in the lion's den, God's going to take care of us, even through the things that we're scared of. Because I know some of us are scared of thunder and lightning, snakes and spiders. My God is so big, like bigger than me. And God is yeah. God is bigger than same God. That's right. Our yeah. God is so big. Mm -hmm. Before we get into any more songs, there's something that we always do in Christ Kids. I want to make sure we do it tonight because I really like it, and I've heard a lot of y'all like it too. So I want you to think right now of what you want to be when you grow up. Because we talk a lot about what you want to be when you grow up. But there's one thing that I want you to always remember, and I tell you this every time when you leave Christ Kids, that the most important thing that you'll ever have to do is, is what? Is be a faithful Christian. So I want you to give me your high five. Can you high five me? So teach, let's teach our parents, okay? So we have to hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized, and we live a faithful life. So we can do whatever we want in life as long as we're a faithful Christian. Yeah. I know in Christ Kids we have all kinds of answers like policemen and vets and firefighters and fairies and princesses and the list goes on. And as long as we're faithful Christians everything else will fall into place. So remember that. And you keep telling your parents the high fives and what it means. All right, after our story tonight, it made me think of one of our songs. Um, I need you to help me sing it. You ready? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you the mountains are his and the valleys are his the oceans his handiwork too my god is so big so strong and so mighty there's nothing my god cannot do for you good job all right we just have a few songs that we want to sing and then um you and your parents can talk about what we talked about tonight in our story all right um, oh, get our fuzzy caterpillars out. You got your fuzzy caterpillars out? You got to have two. You ready? Do I have to? Yes. Okay. Fuzzy caterpillar, he wiggled up a tree. He wiggled long, he wiggled short, he wiggled right at me. I put him in a box. Don't go away, I said. But when I opened up the box, he was a butterfly instead. I know I cannot make one, not even if I try. Cause only God in heaven can make a butterfly. Good job, guys. All right, let's put our little lights up. Can we put your little light up? This, this little, little light, light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine all the time, let it shine. Oh yeah, all around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm gonna let it shine. All around the neighborhood, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine, oh yeah. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine, oh yeah. I won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine.
time. I won't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine all the time. Let it shine, oh yeah. All right. You ready for a song about getting wrapped up in God's Word? Yeah, I'm ready for a song. You ready? I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh yeah. You think you could sing that faster? Yes. Okay, let's try. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in God. I'm all wrapped up, I'm all tied up, I'm all tangled up in Jesus. I'm all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in God. Oh, yeah. Do you think you can do it like super sonic fast? I bet I can. I bet you can't. Let's try. I'm all wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tied up in Jesus. Wrapped up, tied up, tied up in God. Wrapped up, tied up, tied up in Jesus. Wrapped up, tied up in God. Oh, yeah. Good job, guys. Good job. Oh, I didn't write this up here, but I think that we need to sing this song. I think we need to sing Jesus Loves Me. I need to sing I think we do too. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Do you think we can do it without the knees? knees? I can. Can you? Yep. Okay, let's try it. You ready, guys? Let's see if we can trick your parents. Let's see if we can trick my dad. Okay, let's try to sing it without the knees. You ready? Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves For the Bible tells me. So, good job, guys. I have to say maybe, maybe you did better than Mackenzie. All right. Maybe you did better than Our Mackenzie. last song that we're going to sing tonight is Good Old Noah, and I had some requests come in. So, we're going to do it, and the ones that I don't know, we're going to get Mr. Jeremy to do it, because, yep. yeah, that's mm -hmm. how it's going to go. All right, the first one came from Lily, Lily Kay. Kay, so we're going to do a cow for the first animals. You ready, guys? Yep. Good old Noah built the ark. Like I told him to, and on that ark there was a cow. Like I told him to, with a moo here and a moo there, here a moo there, moo everywhere, moo moo. Good old Noah built the ark. Like I told him to, and on that ark he had an elephant. Like I told him to, with a moo here and a moo there. Here, moo, there, moo, everywhere, moo, moo. Good old Noah built the ark like I told him to. And on that one, he had some wolves like I told him to. With a woo here and a woo there. Here, woo, a woo, everywhere else. A woo, woo. Good old Noah built the ark like I told him to. And on that ark he had a lion, like I told him to, with a roar here and roar there, here roar there, roar everywhere, roar, roar. Good old Noah built the ark, like I told him to. And on that ark he had a narwhal, a narwhal. Jeremy's gonna come up with the sound, like I told him to, with a bee. <laughs> Here and a <laughs> there, here, <laughs> there, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Good old Noah built the ark like I told him to. Good job, guys. I have a couple more things for you. First thing is, is we're going to, all week long, we're going to talk about what we're scared of and how God is bigger than all of that. So talk to your parents and tell them. The other thing I want you to do is our Bible 
Our Bible verse for the week is Joshua 1, 1 9. 9. It says to be strong, strong and courageous and do not be afraid and, and discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So God is with us That's wherever true. we go. That is right. That's true. So what I want you to do is in this week, if you have any suggestions of songs you want to hear next or week. Or animals. Or animals. Or fruits. Or fruits. Or if there's a really cool story that you want to hear, just message us and let us know because we plan on doing this every week um, so that um, our kids have some Bible class. So parents, send your suggestions in. And we hope that everybody has a good, right. safe week, and we miss you all. And Bye. have a good night.